All right, it's 8.30. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's Sunday night training. Uh, this is Tom and Alyssa Spaniel coming to you live from Minnesota. A great day to be from Minnesota if you watched the uh, playoff football game today. So I was pumped, and I've been pumped all day since. Yes, I see some thumbs ups out there. So that's, that's awesome. Yes, yeah, thank you. Even if you're not from Minnesota, no one likes the Saints, so this is great. Uh, oh, and maybe some of you do. So my bad. But uh, yes, we're, we're extremely excited to be with you tonight. Um, Alyssa and I have been with LifeVantage for five and a half years now, and it has completely revolutionized our lives. Uh, I have a background in elementary edu education, and I was a high school football and baseball coach as well for three years. Um, and that's now seven years ago. I'm now, uh, I work from home, uh, kind of in the tech startup phase. I have a a software company for landlords and Alyssa is an RN. She works as an RN and a regenerative medicine specialist at a local clinic here in central Minnesota. So we are super excited to uh, do this training for you tonight. It's all about uh, what we call our life design. It's something we did uh, a month and a half ago or so. Uh, we went through this uh, and I'll have Alyssa share a bit more on where we got this, but it's been super beneficial for us. And I know the other people who have done this. We've done it with some other team members on um, the past few weeks, and it's been it's been really good. So heading into 2020, getting that 2020 vision going, um, it's been super beneficial. So we're excited to share these questions, this life design uh, activity with all of you tonight. And I'll let Alyssa share how she really designed this whole thing for us. Yeah. Um, so the inspiration really came from this book, You Are a Badass at Making Money. Um, I'll try to show you guys here uh, if you can see that um, by Jen Sincero. Um, so Tom and I had read this book and I mean a while ago and she has all of these activities listed or questions at the back of each chapter um, and a part of it was you know doing a lot of homework and so we had thought about doing this together as a couple um, probably months ago and then of course we put it off. Um, I don't even know why life just got in the way I think and then finally there was a couple other sources. I don't know if it was some podcast that we were listening to but it kept coming up like we needed to do these things and write down our goals and stuff like that. I mean we have goals, individual goals, we talk about goals but like I don't think we ever really sat down and really listed our goals together as a couple. And again, this does not have to be um, you doing this with another person. It could be completely individual as well. So um, what I did is finally, I was like, okay, we're finally doing this. I booked us a hotel in St. Paul, Minnesota. And it was a nice one because I kind of wanted to get out of our space and into a better area or just an inspiring space away from home to do the homework and to do the goal setting um, and to set our visions kind of higher. So um, I, what I did is I just went through the back of the chapters of this book and I just highlighted the ones that spoke to me and the ones that I thought would be fun for us to do. So I took those, if you, you can certainly read this book and choose other ones that you would like as well, if you don't like the ones we chose, but that's how it kind of all came up about, so. Yeah, so I'll share my screen here and we'll get rocking. We, we came up with 11 questions that we put into our life design. So have your pen and paper ready or be ready to take pictures of the screen. And we're gonna go through the questions and kind of give you a little bit more background on some of them and explain some of them to help you through it. But before we do, um, this, this quote really spoke to me and I, and I have a short story about it. It says, don't set goals based on your current situation, circumstances, or resources. Uh, my friend Kevin Messerschmidt shared this quote with me a few months ago. It came from the book, The Ancient Secrets of Success. And it, and it really made me think And um, that just a few weeks ago, I was, every morning I write in my journal and I was writing the date as I do every day and I wrote 12-12 and it made me think back the last time that we were able to write three numbers in a row for the date, which was when, when it was 12-12-12, uh, so December 12th of 2012. And I was thinking, what in the world was I doing back then? And uh, so just seven years ago, 
um, on December 12th, I was in my first year of teaching, three months or four months into the job. Um, didn't, I knew I didn't want to be there my whole life. Uh, I was waking up. It was, it was way northern Minnesota. It was freezing. I swear it was negative 50 every day. Um, every day I'd walk to my car, kind of miserable. Um, but and I, all I knew is I just wanted to not be doing that, that I wanted to work from home that I wanted to be more free, to be myself, to enjoy everything, to enjoy life, um, to travel more, uh, which is all the things we're now currently doing, right, because of this opportunity. But there's no way, if I would have sat down then, looking at my current situation and current circumstances, that I actually could have even imagined having a successful network marketing business, something that I've never heard of, or being in a tech startup in real estate, these industries that I had literally never heard of at the time. I was an elementary teacher, right? So you really have to, when you're, when you're designing this, when you're going through these activities and writing down your goals and your, actual, your dreams, don't be thinking of like, oh, how am I going to get there when you're writing them down? Think from a spot of abundance of don't be looking at your current circumstances, uh, situation or resources, because those can change, right? And as they change, that's how your goals can start to happen. So really be thinking of this from a spot of abundance uh, and give yourself time to do this when you choose to sit down and do this. So let's go ahead and go through these. Let's see. Here's the question number one or thing number one to write down. Make a list of all the awesome things and experiences money will add to your life. So write down everything you can think of. So not just one or two, uh, we really chose to kind of go nuts. Uh, you can see here, like, I don't know, there's like 50 things here on ours of, you know, what, what can uh, money do for you? All the list of awesome things that money can add to your life and really go nuts with it. You know, I, I, we tend to be really shy about money often, um, like money is bad. You know, it comes from all these limiting beliefs that we have in our backgrounds, but really think, what are the awesome things that you could do? How, how could you experience life differently um, if you had money? So that's, that's step number one. A lot of these are about, a lot of these questions are also about like priming your mind for money, abundance, you know, thinking differently and how to really change this decade. So that's number one. Um, number two is make a list of how you being rich will benefit others. Um, so really just thinking about other people. Um, I know that's a big part of why Tom and I uh, want to ha or have these abundant goals of having a lot of money is because we love to give to people. We love to give to our friends. We we just love doing things um, with other people and helping other people to do things that maybe they wouldn't um, have the money to do. So go crazy on that because I think that's one of the more fun questions is how you can think about um, uh, giving back to your friends and family. Yes. Number three, this one's long, so you might want to take a picture of it or you can write down just a little bit and I'll, I'll, you, I'll explain kind of everything that's going on on the screen here. Or get but the book. Yeah, it says it's in the book, too. but this one's pretty exciting. So, and everyone has seemed to, you know, enjoy this one the most. It's write about your fantasy day in the life. What would a typical day in your life as the richest, happiest, and most successful version of yourself look like? We can rattle on all day about what we don't want, but being very clear about what you do want usually takes a bit more doing, especially since you're looking to radically change your life. You've never experienced your own to many of the things you're seeking. So how the hell can you know? So that's what she's saying. Take some time to, to think about this. Um, this is why it's so important when you're writing this to come from a, more of a feeling spot than from your analytical brain. Give yourself time when you write it. Do it stream of conscious to sit down. Uh, give yourself time and then go. Let it flow. Now write it in the present tense. That's very important. Write this in the present tense as if money weren't an issue. Think of what, be, what would be super fun, not just reasonable, what would make you the most excited to give back or leave a legacy and really go to town? And I, I will tell you, this is the easily the one that we've had most feedback on that people have truly enjoyed, like even seeing what they came up with, like what they were capable of coming up with that, you know what, I could live up out this fantasy day. This is truly what I want. I'm not holding back. I, like, I deserve this. And 
um, go to town on it. Like we wrote, I mean, a full page or longer of some pretty awesome things. And I'll tell you, it has nothing to do with us living in Minnesota. It was a lot of, uh, you know, living somewhere else in a tropical bungalow, um, you know, cooking dinner with our friends. We, we kind of hit on everything. And it's it really, as she says, as Jen says, come from that spot of feeling, you know, what really gets you going? That's, that's really what you know, what you love. Like, what turns you on inside? What makes you super excited? And be thinking of that when you're thinking what your fantasy day would look like. And this fantasy day would then, of course, lead to, this is your fantasy life. This isn't just a one-time, you know, this, is, this isn't a vacation day. This is like, what, what's a wonderful, typical day in your life want to look like? But it's the all-time best day that you can have. So, yeah. You got anything to add on that one? I don't think so. Okay. I mean, you said we don't live in Minnesota, so that's about it. That's the main thing. <laughs> Getting out of this cold place. Skull Vikings, though. Um, okay. Okay, number four. Um, write down the five strongest emotions you feel when you read your fantasy day or your day in the life. Um, so that's pretty easy, straightforward. Um, some of our emotions were gratitude, calmness, healthy, light, love, harmonious, all of those things. So as you write down that fantasy day, how you feel when you're writing it. As you, you get a sense for these, some of these questions and what we've said already, Jen is super big on like the emotions that are attached to everything. And, and for me, that's really huge in goal setting and in striving for anything. It's, it's not just going to be some numbers that you want to get to. It's what's going to get you there is always the feeling behind it. And that's, you know, we talk a lot in this industry about your why. Um, and it's really the feeling that's attached to your why, the feeling that's attached to these days is what really makes it happen for you. So feel it. Um, but then you also do need to do some number crunching. So she gets kind of um, like, let's get a little bit analytical here. You know, you feel it, you write it from this place of abundance, but then like, okay, what's it going to take? So number five, do the numbers around your day in the life. Get an idea on the page of how much this life of yours is going to cost you. So simple, right? If you wrote this whole day in the life where maybe we were living in Costa Rica and we, you know, maybe we had scooters or whatever we had there, like, okay, do some research. What did, what is it? What are properties done that look like? Do you still want to have one here? Right. And just figure out what are the numbers? What's this, I, what's this life of yours going to cost you? So actually do a little bit of research here. Mantra time. I like it. Number six, boil down your day in the life, taking the most exciting details of it, combining them with the cost and the feelings they bring up so you can create a mantra. So kind of combining, combining all the three, four, and five, I think, uh, basically. Uh, don't worry about fitting everything in, just the most compelling parts. Um, that was a lot of fun for us to write as well. And uh, we read it every night before we go to bed and maybe I'm jumping forward on that one, but. That happens um, to be number seven. Oh, yeah, okay. Which is fine. All right, um, yes. So, should we read our mantra? Sure. Okay. All right, so ours is this. We love making X amount of money per year as entrepreneurs and healthcare professionals. Our professions afford us the ability to have time, freedom, and flexibility in our schedules. We are grateful that we have a home that is calming and harmonious, not only for us, but for others as well. We go about our day together feeling light and excited, giving and receiving love. Our bodies are nourished, whole, and healthy. We are so grateful that the money we make affords us the ability to live our best lives. Well said. Okay. Well, that's your mantra. I'll go back to six again, um, just in case you didn't get to write this down because it was longer, but boil down your day in your life, right? And then now that you've kind of heard Alyssa read ours, this makes a bit more sense and taking the most exciting details and combining them with the cost and feelings. So that's why you said, you know, heard at the beginning, so grateful we make X. And then there was a lot of feelings in there, mm -hmm. uh, feeling light, feeling all those feelings of gratitude for us. Um, and, and that's where she says, again, don't, don't worry about fitting everything in just the most compelling parts. This is a paragraph mantra that you are then as number seven says, read every night before you go to bed. And, um, 
truly feel it every single night, get excited about it every night, see it, feel it, believe it. Mm -hmm. And we do this and honestly, I'm more of an anxious person. And like, I think a lot once I lay down at night, but we read this and I can, I can literally feel myself like relax and just know that like, this is done and this will, will come to fruition. Um, so I hope that does it for you as well. Okay. Number eight. Number eight. You're stronger than you think folks. Write down five reasons you have faith in yourself. Um, I really liked this one yeah. and was definitely one of the reasons we chose it to put it in here is because I think so way too often we don't give ourselves credit um, for ourselves and, and the great things that you can do and what you're capable of. Uh, mm -hmm. So really think about it. Like, why would you have faith in yourself? And we, we both did these individually, at least this one. Um, we each wrote five things uh, why I have faith in myself. What were some of mine? I'll read you. You're a badass. I'll read you. Okay, I'll read you three. One, I said, I'm a badass. And then I said, I'm resourceful. Um, and then, oh, yes, I like this one. I'm really good at improving. I'm not super skilled in a lot of areas, but I'm great at getting better, I said. And uh, but I think that's true about me. And you don't have to be super good, right? You've, you've probably heard that a lot. You, you don't need to be good or great to get started. You just got to be uh, good and then and get started. You can turn into being great, right? Just start things. And I think that's luckily for me, something I've been uh, consistently good at is just starting something and improving. Yeah. So as you can tell, I'm excited about why I have faith in myself. <laughs> Let's uh, give us two. Um, I can teach myself almost anything and I work hard and sacrifice for those I love. This is true. That's a good one. Um, and then next is right along the same lines. Uh, number nine, write down five reasons you have faith in the universe. I liked this one too. Um, some of our examples were the universe is abundant. Um, the good we do multiplies back to us and the universe provides us with what we seek. Um, obviously there's a lot more reasons out there. Yeah. But. And, and, and do it for you. So five reasons you have faith in the universe. Awesome. Two more. Here's a longer one. I'll try to keep it on the screen for a bit or take a photo of it. Uh, this one's all about crushing doubts. So number 10, anticipate your obstacles. Doubt is like the little string you tug on that unravels the whole sweater. Get clear on the top three things that could bring doubt to your resolve and prepare yourself to meet them head on so they are powerless. Example, and, and have your mantras ready, as she's saying. So example, my spouse won't be supportive of me. And if you had the mantra ready, it may say, only I know my own truth and I know in my bones that I am rich. So write down three obstacles and write three solutions for them. So kind of anticipating those things that could get in the way for you um, while you're trying to you know, live out your best day and design your life. What do we have? Any, anything decent to share? Uh, becoming maybe this relying or on becoming complacent. oh yeah no we even just said like that, and that's very relevant for you know everyone in, in network marketing as well as relying on others performance yeah. for our freedom and our mantra was i am resourceful no matter what happens i can <laughs> resource Re oh oh we got we got some foul language in here resource <laughs> the shit back together again Okay, we're so resourceful. We're so resourceful. We're back together. So we're resourceful enough to get it back together. I like that one. As you can tell, we don't read that every night. Part of our mantra, but maybe we should. That's fantastic. Uh, yes. So crush your doubts. Crush them. Having a mantra ready, anticipate it, and know how to um, crush it and put it back together. And last and final. Last and final. It's a long one again. Chunk uh, it. Chunk it. Yeah, chunk right. it. All right. Number 11, you got a head start on this and number five with doing the numbers, but go a little bit deeper. Um, get clear on how much money you desire to make and by when. Be specific about what the money is for and don't forget to include your monthly nut of bare necessity costs. Okay. Make sure this number is real and connected to specific things that bring up specific emotions. Then chunk it back 
if your goal is five years away, chunk it back to how much you'll make in four years, how much in, I mean, we did it by three years, then two years, one year, six months, um, all the way back to the current month. Then put a definite plan in place with clear action steps that go toward your goal. Yeah, so as, as she said, we, we did this out three years um, to 2022, November of 2022, because we did this in 2019 of November. Um, and really, we have November 2021, November 2020. We have six months things. We have things we wanted to figure out. Um, oh, yeah, that's by right, June. Right, yeah. um, you know, we're going to have these different stream of incomes. This is what we want to do. So we really chose to chunk it back. And, I, and I this is a really good magical last step because when you do the chunking, um, then the plan starts to be a bit more clear. <laughs> but I like, I personally really love starting from that place of abundance. Right, starting at the beginning with those um, complete abundance things going with your fantasy day of the life. Uh, you know, the quote that I said before come from a place um, where you're not looking at your current situation and everything. And then once you have that in, in place, chunking it back starts to make it okay, I can do this. Um, so, I that's where I love Jen's book and we love this activity because it was. It was a, I would call it a blend of being, um, you know, actually smart with the numbers and figuring things out while coming from this awesome spot of, of pure abundance and knowing that I can do anything, even if it doesn't look like it right now in my life. Um, Cause that's, I think I tend to be a, a little more on that side always, you know, it's like, no, nah, we got this, figured it out. But obviously there still needs to be plans, right. Um, to eventually get there. So it's, really awesome that's why we chose to do this whole uh, activity and in the order that's in um and we have again found it very beneficial for us obviously we're early into it we just did it in november um but it's been really beneficial for us i'm excited super excited to look back on it um in a decade or in five years right as you heard it a lot in this industry we overestimate what we can do in a year and drastically underestimate what you can do in a decade and we have found that to be wildly true, uh, you know, since our time joining Life Vantage and now going on five and a half years, it, now it's starting to really kind of blow my mind, everything, um, and where life can get to. So yeah, enjoy it. Other stuff to add? Nope. Nope. All right. If you, um, I was going to say, yeah, if you didn't get all of that stuff, if you, for some reason, don't have the questions, you can shoot me an email and I'll just email you the PDF. My email is tomspaniel at gmail.com. That's T-O-M-S-P-A-N-I-O-L at gmail.com. So I can, I can send you the list of these 11 questions. Otherwise, they're on this replay. Take pictures of them, write them down. Enjoy it. This is, your, this is for you. If you want to add any questions like Alyssa said, go ahead. Um, if you want to do vision board activities to go along with this after, that's super fantastic and awesome. We did some sort of board activity after this as well. Um, enjoy it, but I highly recommend scheduling a time in your in your um, in your life to do this or something like it, and get clear on where you're going, uh, and and have fun, and go Vikings. Anything else? Oh, you got it, teacher. Awesome. Hey, thanks everyone for joining us. It was super fun to be with you. Have an awesome Sunday night. Bye. Bye-bye.